Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Renate Schröder, Director of the European Federation of Journalists. Renate represents the interests of journalists at EU and Council of Europe level, while taking on a multitude of other tasks, ranging from the presentation of the Federation at international meetings, fact-finding missions on media freedom, acting as member of juries of journalistic prizes, and participating in several expert groups on freelancers, media literacy, and digital journalism. Okay, Renata, you know about our three plus one format. So you get three questions and one soapbox moment. Uh, so I'll put the first question on screen. What does protecting media freedom mean to you? Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for the nice introduction. Well, as you said it, I am working for the European Federation of Journalists, which is a federation of journalist unions and associations. And our prime goal, naturally, is to empower journalists to do what they are best at, if allowed, to dig for the truth, talk to different sources, analyze, write, and connect and reconnect to create trust with the diverse and ever more diverse audiences we have in Europe. And all that without the fear of being attacked physically or online or forced to follow clickbait or just forced to do cut and paste. And first of all, without the fear of being killed, I remind you that at loan last year, six journalists were killed in Europe, four of them in targeted killing, two of them in the European Union, Netherlands and Greece. So, what does protecting media freedom means for me? I'll give you six points, and I'm sure there are more. First, it means empowering journalists to do their work by setting up the right economical, legal, and social framework. It means having independent media regulators who guarantee the independence of the media and have a sort of watchdog position. In case of printed and online media, it means to have efficient self-regulation, to have media councils and other self-regulatory measures in order to keep the state outside of any potential influence on content. In case of public service media, it includes financial and political guarantees for its independence. Third, it means having the right tools to protect editorial independence in the newsroom from outside or inside influence be it politicians, businessmen or women, or advertisement companies, for example. It also means creating or maintaining an environment where potential aggressors know that they are persecuted and hold to power by law enforcement if they attack journalists' integrity. We call it no to impunity. Five. It means that also law enforcement, police and governments need to do everything to enable the environment, I mentioned before, that guarantees journalists' work. Also by protecting journalist sources, by guaranteeing access to information, but also access to events, be it demonstrations, be it refugee camps, or whatever is of public interest. And last but not least, in times of market failure of journalism, it means creating sustainable ways for independent media companies, for freelancers, to be able again to do their work as journalism is a public good and deserves therefore full protection, both legally, financially and socially. Governments are to supply public goods that markets either fail to provide or cannot provide efficiently in the case of journalism, of course, at arm's length. Thank you. Um, thank you, Renata. That was a, a very, um, how should I say, comprehensive list of things that you um, see as um, being able to create media freedom uh, in Europe and beyond, uh, obviously. Um, I, I think the fact that um, journalists are still dying while doing their job uh, in, in the European Union is something that uh, people need to keep uh, into mind uh, every time they think 
about media freedom because I think we, we often associate those things to other geographies. And they're actually much closer than we think. And it, it makes me switch to the second question uh, from our three plus one format, which is obviously knowing what media freedom is, what should the EU legislators do or do better to protect media freedom? Thank you, Caroline. Yes, indeed, this is an important issue. And I didn't mention before, but I just want to add it at this very moment, there have been 12 journalists killed in the Ukraine for doing their job. Ukraine may become an applicant country. It's a war situation, so it's special, but it still shows that many things go wrong. So when it comes to the European Union, first of all, I would like to say that the EU has taken some indeed important steps to tackle the problems, such as a recommendation on safety of journalists. Unfortunately, it's only a recommendation, but it goes definitely in the right direction a directive on whistleblowers protection, very important indeed for journalists, a draft directive on SLAP. I don't know if everybody knows what SLAP means. These are strategic lawsuits against public participation, unfortunately very often used against media, against journalists to silence them. And more funding measures to support independent journalism. But much more needs to be done to build the political will and translate the commitments. And we have many, I tell you, we have a lot of international standards, specifically from the Council of Europe, but we need to implement them and put them into concrete action at the national level. Probably everybody has heard by now that the European Commission is preparing a so-called European Media Freedom Act, which in my mind is the most important legal toolbox in the years, hopefully. Come. And I'll give you, I think, three key recommendations you asked for. So here they are. <laughs> the first one, in our view, is transparency of media ownership and state funding. Knowing who owns and controls the media is fundamental for democratic resilience. And like many types of business, media companies have the special power to shape public opinion. So there should be more instead of less when it comes to transparency. Transparency of media ownership and media funding is therefore a fundamental tool to ensure media plurality, accountability, and independence, and to prevent conflicts of interest, of course, in the allocation of state funds and end the practice, unfortunately practice that is done increasingly by many member states, of using state funds to reward uncritical coverage and punish critical journalism. Actually quite easy and therefore copied in member states from Hungary and the like. Thus, this European Media Freedom Act must primarily improve transparency of media ownership and all relations between the state and the media. We support the European Commission's original proposals, such as the establishment of a pan-European registry to increase the transparency of media market transactions and establishment of EU-wide monitoring of site advertisement allocated by the member states. We sincerely hope these proposals will make it to the promised legal tools. We are still not there, I tell you. Second point. Ensure editorial independence, including of public service media. Actually, this is from the start said something and repeated several times by Commissioner Jourova. We have to protect media from politi politicization. And the media capture shows um, how, how far we have come there. So how can we ensure editorial independence? We have to establish and implement strong safeguards for editorial independence of media foster media self-regulation besides strengthening the independence of national media regulators. This includes safeguards for the protection of sources, guarantees against surveillance, not only spyware as Pegasus, but also state surveillance, which unfortunately is also on the rise. With the increasingly bad working conditions, the status of journalists is falling and thus also the power to risk pressure from outside. You know, when you don't earn enough, it's much easier to be corrupt. 
When it comes to ensuring editorial independence in the newsrooms, trade unions and press councils play an important role. And last but not least, guaranteeing the independence of public service media, including safeguards for the appointments of procedures in public service management, for rules on the absence of conflict of interest. I just remind you, a few years ago, Berlusconi was sort of, uh, could be uh, put together with um, conflict of interest, a prime minister who was more or less owning too much media and had a lot of influence on public service media, and we have that now in many member states. And last but not least, probably something that the Commission will not take up in its legal toolbox, but for us, very, very important, is the issue of media viability to sustain journalism, as I said before, as a public good. Because without finance, there is no independent journalism. The EMFA should help promote innovative business models, funding measures at arm's length. The development of the EU fund for media pluralism to finance original independent journalistic programs and initiatives to contribute to the sustainability of the media sector have already started, but it needs to continue. We believe the EMFA should ensure that journalists are being paid for their work, and benefit for revenues made on the basis of content produced by them or the independent media they work for. You know that with the copyright directive, we had hoped that authors are fairly remunerated. Unfortunately, this is not the case. So what we ask for is that the dominant part of advertisement and other revenues made on the basis of content produced by independent media or freelancers is currently siphoned off by social media companies. We know about 80% of advertisement is going to the big platforms. So the ENFA should draw lessons from experiences and experiments like the Australian New Media Bargaining Code of 21 and other similar forms of collective bargaining agreement which are aimed at paying for content shared on their platforms or forms of taxation in order to ensure revenues flow back to independent. These are just three points on my wish list, and I'd be happy if the EU works on that. Um, yeah, I think I think um, your point about maybe investing more on action enforcement and not just doing the words and and making sure that whatever is adopted also um, translates into actual. Um, uh, transformations at member state level is probably the most tricky, but the only one that will make uh, happen what is needed for journalists to feel safe and to be rewarded for their work, their public interest work. And on the transparency one, I have to admit, I, I never understand the opposition to transparency because as an outsider to the debate, I always think, yes, obviously transparency, <laughs> but it seems that is uh, a lot more, um, how should I say, controversial than normal human beings would expect it to be <laughs> that are outside of, of, of um, the sector. Um, that leads me maybe to the third question, because obviously you've said what they can do positively in terms to improve um, how media functions, uh, but maybe also it's worth warning them about the pitfalls that EU legislators should avoid when trying to protect the media and our freedoms? Yes, thank you. I'll be rather brief on that. For me, it's very straightforward. I think the first point is we do not want to have any ministry of truth, neither at national level nor at European level. We do not want any government or EU interference in content. That's probably the most important point I'm raising. For example, the EFJ disapproved the EU's decision to ban Russian propaganda news like Russia Today, even though they have put it as top part of sanctions against the war. It was a precedent that EU institution is mingling in media issues. So this, we believe, is the wrong approach. And I can tell you in another moment why. Second, we do not favor terms like balanced reporting. In the consultation on the European Media Freedom Act, it was mentioned. That's why I'm saying it. We 
do not agree with this concept of balanced and impartial media coverage leading to any positive results. What means impartial? Journalism with a human face rarely is impartial, let's face it. Important for us is support, and here, sorry, I'm coming again, what's important, is support through financial support, training, training for ethical journalism, and independence, editorial independence, and media pluralism. The publishers say that the EU Commission wants to regulate content. We do not agree with that, and are confident they will not even try. I talked to Commissioner Jourova this morning, and she said again, no, they know they wouldn't dare. It is important to get the aforementioned issues right. And she said she would not enter on how to be more professional on how to raise the standards. We know nowadays many people want to find ways to raise standards. They want to regulate the access to journalism. They think um, it would be better by that. But I tell you, we believe the journalist profession has to remain free. Some member states, like in Italy, we still have a chamber or ordine. You have to do a test to be a journalist. I don't think this is the right approach. So while we favor, for example, a strengthening of the ERGA, which are the European regulators' authorities, we want that it keeps its complete independence and will not become an executive arm of the European Commission's decision in the media. Again, it has to stay away from content. So these are, in a nutshell, at least our main points when it comes to pitfalls. Um, yeah, I, I, I can imagine that having requirements for someone to be a journalist is um, a bit uh, counterproductive when you see the rise of citizen journalism and, and the fact that um, many of the journalists I've met have very diverse backgrounds, usually. <laughs> They're not necessarily all coming from the school of journalism, let's put it that way. They, yes. they often come from the school of life, <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> um, I, I think you've already um, done uh, a couple of pleas in your answers to the institutions, but you still get the soapbox moments. You still get to... Um, speak to uh, Roberta, uh, President of the European Parliament, and Ursula, President of the European Commission, two strong women. You're a strong woman yourself, so I think that's going to be an interesting moment uh, where you can, in two minutes, I think, um, tell them what you want from them and what you expect from them. Thank you, Caroline. This is a pleasure, of course. <laughs> um, first of all, to Ursula von der Leyen, Ursula or Mrs. von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, I wish to remind you what you said in your State of the Union speech in 2019. You said, and I quote, journalists are being targeted simply for doing their job. Some have been threatened, some beaten, and tragically, some murdered. Right here in our European Union, let me mention some of their names. Daphne Caruana Galizia, Jan Kuczak, Peter de Ries. The details of their stories may be different, but what they have in common is that they all fought and died for our right to be informed. Information is a public good. We must protect those who create transparency. That journalists. I could not have said it better, I have to say. In that speech, you also announced the upcoming European Media Freedom Act. So now, my pledge, please, Stick to your words and do not get sidelined by geopolitics, by realpolitik, by any wars that are at our frontiers. The future generations will judge you for having or not defended European democracy in a crucial moment, or having given in to the Orwells and Kaczynski of Europe, which are in my mind the real enemies of Europe, who do not stop spreading disinformation and here, Ursula von der Leyen, it is high time to name and shame the EU member states that do nothing or almost nothing to protect journalists. Or even worse, that do something, that continue their smear campaigns against journalists and thereby give the idea to the citizens that this is the new normal. It is high time to put the need to sustain journalism as a public good, as you just 
set it yourself on the EU's agenda, independently of its legal remit. It's a question of to be or not to be in the long run. Thanks for supporting Commissioner Jourova and all the real friends of media freedom on this way, and all who want to live in democracies based on the rule of law and media freedom. So now I'm coming to Roberta Mezzola. Roberta, thank you very much for your continued support on media freedom, for your fight against slaps, but also against impunity. You know what it means, as Daphne was brutally murdered in your little beautiful island. And seeking the murder has indeed been a very complicated journey, full of darkness, corruption, and lack of courage, specifically by politicians. You said at this year's World Press Freedom Day, and again I quote, our position is always on the side of truth thinkers, meaning journalists. Please, do not only support us within the European Parliament, but please make it a priority of you and this European Parliament to transmit the importance of media freedom the importance of protecting journalists to all national parliaments. National parliaments must have the political will to put media freedom and journalist independence, both financially and editorially, as a very priority. And while the financial support, I'm afraid, will not be part of the Media Freedom Act, we need specifically the EP support here to find solutions. I mentioned a few ones before best practice, continued pilot projects on funding independent media projects, media literacy, etc. Thank you, Roberta, for helping us in creating a political will in Europe to defend media. Thank you, Renata. That was, that was very eloquent. And, and obviously, it's always easier when the people you're talking to have already stated they wanted to do what you expect from them now yeah. you just want them to translate those words into actual meaningful yes, action the most important thing even commissioner Jourova said we don't need cosmetics we don't need lip serving we need action this is where we are in the middle of 22. well i i we are expecting in september or september october let's say the european media freedom act i think that will be a milestone to see how the words have translation translated into a draft of action, <laughs> of proposed action. And who knows, maybe we will uh, do a follow-up of this podcast at that time, once we know exactly what's on the table. And we right. if what's on the table is something we like or, um, or, or and serves the interests of journalists, or if there are big holes <laughs> and uh, the parliament and council can help fill them. Let's put it that way in a positive manner. Thank you so much for your time, Renata. Truly appreciate it. And um, as, as I said, probably to be followed is, is the closing of this podcast. Thank you. As we say in French. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>